Are you ready to take your photography to the next level? In today's episode, I'm gonna reveal some must-have items, some must-have gear for the new, the beginning, the emerging, the person who's trying to start photography. If that's you, today's episode is for you. We got must-have gear. Essential equipment, I guess you could call it. Essential equipment that every photographer needs the first thing that everybody needs we all know this this is a high quality camera body now my camera body is a r5 i shoot with a canon canon cameras i use a mirrorless uh, r5 is a mirrorless camera if you're not sure the thing that's amazing about mirrorless cameras is the eye tracking. They're able to actually catch the eye and literally adjust focus, which for me is something that like is revolutionary. When I got the R5, I actually became a better photographer and I've been shooting for 100 years. The next very, very important item, and again, you don't need to buy a $5,000 body like this one, you can buy the best body that you can afford. My suggestion, if you're going to buy used, buy something that's within the last three years. And if you're buying something new, buy the best camera body that you can afford. Buy something that is mirrorless because most camera manufacturers have actually stopped manufacturing digital SLRs. So camera body is the first thing that I would buy. The next thing that's super important when it comes to your photography gear, your photography kit, and I, it might seem like I'm jumping ahead here, but I'm not. The next thing that's super important I'm not going to pull it all the way over, it's too big is a high quality camera bag. Now, I have a camera bag sponsor. I'm sponsored by a brand named Hex, Hex brand bags. By the way, if you're interested in any of the things that I'm talking about today, in the video description that you're watching, there's itemized links and such like that you can look at. My hex bag is called the Cinema Backpack. And because I do the type of photography where I'm sometimes shooting video, sometimes I'm shooting stills, I need lots of space. If you're a newer photographer, you might not need the same size bag that I have, but you definitely need a bag that you can grow with. My suggestion is a bag that holds a camera body and a few lenses. Even if you only have a camera body and one lens, it's good to get a bag that holds more gear than you have now. So there's a little bit of room for expansion, but don't buy a massive camera bag quite yet like the one that I have until you have the gear to fill it. Now, the thing that's amazing about Camera bags, and by the way, I have made a video on my cinema backpack. You can see that in my insights from a 30 year pro playlist. Um, I don't need to get into my specific bag, but Hex has been taking care of me for the last, oh my God, almost 10 years now and sending me bags. So um, I rep Hex, I love their bags. They have great, great camo and Arctic camo and some pretty cool patterns. So I really like it. And they don't look like camera bags, which is the thing that is the most important more than anything. Also, something to think about when you're choosing a camera bag, make sure it's waterproof, make sure it's durable. And also the last thing, make sure it doesn't look like a camera bag. Um, camera bags that just look like backpacks are the kind of way for me, that's the way that I go. Um, also double strap protection, meaning it's on both your arms, so it's harder to take. Also, when you zip to get into my gear, it's not from the side or from the back, it's actually against my body. So it's the hardest to steal my gear without uh, knocking me down. All right, and also, your camera bag should be specific to the kind of photography that you do. So make sure, and the same with your camera body. Camera body, camera bag, specific to the type of photography that you do. If you're not sure of what type of photography you're gonna do, get the best mirrorless you can afford and um, get a bag that has a little bit of room for an expansion that is a backpack. All right, so number two, lens choices. Now, when it comes to lenses, my recommendation always for a new photographer 
is to get a 50 millimeter lens first, a 50. The reason that I say get a 50 millimeter lens is because the 50 C's have the human eye C's. And when you're new to photography and you're learning photography, when you're learning about depth of field, you're learning about aperture, shutter speed, using a 50 millimeter lens is gonna actually give you true depth of field where using a zoom lens, using a kit lens, one of those 18 to 55 lenses, they're not gonna give you a true depth of field. So when you're shooting wide open with one of those kit lenses, you're not getting 1.2 in my case, or 1.8, you're getting 4.5 or 3.5. So your depth of field just isn't quite there. Also prime lenses and specifically this 50 has between six and 10 elements. The average zoom lens has between 16 and 22 elements. So more glass, more light loss, more light has to travel through more elements and you just end up losing image quality. So you'll always find that prime, lens are, prime lenses are better. I recommend starting with a 50 because once you know how you're shooting with how the human eye sees, you'll know I want to get closer. I want my photos to feel closer so you can get a telephoto after that. Or I want to shoot a little bit wider. I want more to be in my frame. And then you get a wide angle. One of the lenses that I love is my 135 F2. This is an L series lens. It is a portrait lens, a considered a medium telephoto. I mean, telephoto lenses go all the way to like 1200. So a 135 is two, just 2.3 or so times closer than a normal 50. But because this is an F2 and because this is a very, very bright lens, I'm gonna just take the lens caps off here so you can see how bright this lens is. If you look and see how bright this lens is where's my lens there there you go it's um it's very very open the depth of field is incredibly wide so this 135 is what i would call the specialty lens and i have it because i love it and um it's just a really beautiful perspective that gives me a look that is uh, it's the most buttery bouquet you can possibly imagine. And I can't believe that I said buttery bouquet. All right, so high quality lenses are super important. Number one, lenses last forever. We have to remember that our camera bodies change all the time. And since I first turned or switched to digital, I've had eight, nine, 10 camera bodies, like I can't even count them and they're hard to remember. I had one Hasselblad when I was shooting film and my 35 millimeter camera when I was shooting film. Funny enough, my 85 millimeter, which is in my bag, I've had since my original EOS. My 85 millimeter was the second lens that I ever bought. So um, lenses last forever. Buying high quality lenses is even smarter. They don't break, they last forever. Um, and you can move them from body to body to body to body. Um, there's also photographers who like zoom lenses. And if you're one of those photographers, I'm not trying to take anything away from you. Just know that in order to get a high quality zoom, you're needing to spend so much money. Like an RF 28 to 70 for my Canon camera is, you know, $3,500. So I could buy a fixed 24, a fixed 35, a fixed 50, a fixed 85 and cover the range. Now, if they're L series, those lenses are also individually quite expensive, but you can get STM lenses that are gonna be as high quality and sharp and they're much less expensive. You can get um, Sigma lenses, there's Tamron lenses, there's aftermarket brand lenses that are actually super high quality. So do the research, start with a 50, the most expensive 50 that you can afford because you'll have it for your whole life and then decide what other lenses you need with that 50. Okay, um, obviously your focal length choices are very dependent on what you're shooting. If you're shooting wildlife, you're wanting 
a 200, a 400, a 600 millimeter lens. And you'll also notice that wildlife photographers lean towards primes when it comes to those hyper long focal lenses and not zooms. Anybody who's buying a 100 to 500 or a 200 to 600, they're definitely an amateur photographer. They're not a serious pro because those lenses, although expensive, are very dim. The ones that you see that are gray, like this lens here, the gray lenses that you see the football photographers and the baseball photographers shooting on the sidelines um, that have like openings like this and huge lens hoods and they're shooting with a monopod and the monopod is attached to the lens and not the camera. Those are all fixed lenses, either 200, four, 300, 400, 500, 600. Like those lenses are amazing, but very specialty to what the photographer is shooting. By the way, if you are watching live, I thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget that if you're watching live, you can do all kinds of cool things. You can do all kinds of cool things. There's a list of cool things that you can do, um, like make clips, like take a selfie, like make my dancers dance. There's all kinds of cool things that you can do. All right, next, next, next. I think that covers lenses. Now I wanna talk a little bit about enhancing your photography workflow. Let's talk a little bit about um, your laptop, editing efficiency, having, a, having like the right machine. I'm gonna tell you a story about the importance of Apple computers versus PCs when it comes to the creative world. Now, I'm not trying to be polarizing, but I am going to tell you 90% um, of the photographers in the industry are using Macs. 100% of the advertising agencies, design firms, art directors, they're all using Macs. Every advertising agency, they're all on Macs. The color from Mac to Mac to Mac to Mac is consistent. And it's a language that creatives speak is dealing Mac to Mac. It's like an iPhone. I, although with iPhones, many people have Android more than um, PC in the creative world. But I've converted more people to Apple products because of this one story. I, w I got hired to shoot a large advertising gig. I mean, this was a $12,000 project. It was quite a big project. And I met the art director. The art director asked me if I had a laptop and I said, no. And he gave me one of those. And then he said, but you do work on Apple computers, right? And I said, I have a PC. <laughs> and then he said, now you're making me question whether I should have hired you or not. And then he went into the reasons that there's an issue, starting with color, starting with tethering, starting with so many reasons when it came to like workflow of this project. So he said, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to get you a deposit for this job. And what I'm going to ask you to do is go directly to the Apple store and buy a PowerBook. And he got me a deposit. I went right to the store and I bought a PowerBook. And that's how I got my first Apple computer was literally an art director telling me. Um, and it, it changed everything for me. Like I, I've made more and learned more and had done more and designed more since I've been on an, a Mac. Like I run my stream. This whole system is run on a Mac computer. I have an M1 Mac mini here with two dual 4Ks. And I have my laptop, which is what we're talking about because the laptop is really the first thing. If you're a new photographer and you have a camera, the next thing that you need to invest in is a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, a newer Apple laptop, and it's going to change your life. It's going to make you inspired to work. It's going to make you inspired to be creative with this machine. It's going to make you inspired to work on your photography, to work on your website. It's going to 
make your photography life easier. And when you have some extra money, you can buy your first 4K monitor and plug your laptop into your monitor, get a keyboard, get a mouse, and now your laptop is actually a desktop. I don't do that myself because the Mac mini is so small and I've, um, I wanted to have two separate machines, meaning I didn't want to disconnect when I am going from machine to machine. So that's the reason that I have two. So having a powerful laptop with amazing editing capabilities, great processing power to be able to do all the stuff that you do. There's the M1, there's the M2, there's like all of Mac's newer machines are amazing and the price is reasonable for what they do for us. So um, next thing, very, very, very important is an SSD drive. Now, back in the day, hard drives, they didn't look like this. Back in the day, hard drives looked like this, which you can see right here. I have a dock which holds two spinning disks or if they're, I can take SSDs and these basically dock SATA drives and I dock this into my machine. I use this for my photography and I have two slots so I can back them up. That's what I do for my desktop. When it comes to working from my laptop, I use a mobile drive and this is a, a one terabyte SSD. SSDs are the fastest ways to transfer data between your camera and your computer, between your computer and your storage device. This also you can mail, you can drop. I don't have to worry about, um, I mean, it's small enough that you can lose it. That's why they give you a, like a, a hook for a carabiner so you can clip it onto your camera bag. It just makes it um, super easy. There's lots of mobile drives. SSD is the way to go, preferably a USB-C that has a very fast write speed. That's my only recommendation. The reason that I use at SanDisk is they're trusted. I think that everybody should have as many of these as you could afford. I edit all my video off of this. All right. And also every time I do a photo shoot when I'm on location, this is the disc that I transfer my tether files to. And I use this to transfer between my two machines. All right. So that is data, a little bit of backup, a little bit of laptop, a little bit of edis editing efficiency. Let's get into our next section, which has to do a little bit, um, with data transfer. Now, I use a card reader. And if you're not using a card reader, please get a card reader today. Nowadays, card readers, and I have a USB, um, this is just a USB 3, but like I could get a USB C card reader, which will transfer my files even faster, which I think I'm going to do. This is a multi-reader, so it takes my SD cards, it takes my micro SD cards, it takes CF cards if you need it. It, it basically takes everything except for CF Express, um, which I need to get another reader for that, but I've been using SD cards. This, everybody needs. I have an independent la uh, card reader for my laptop, for, for my desktop. This is what I need to bring my data in. Do not plug your camera into your computer in order to transfer your files. That's like having the world's most expensive card reader. And all that has to happen is somebody walks by, trips, you hook the cord and knock your camera over and it's a disaster. So don't do that. Um, also use as far as um, your card, you're when you're in your card reader, when you're bringing them into the machine, I go right onto a storage file. I don't store anything on my machine. I bring it either onto this drive and then I go between my machines on this or I bring it into my, um, my raw drive and work off it that way and then back up that said drive. All right, now, you should also be backing certain things up to the cloud, meaning your portfolio files. 
back as soon as you finish a file, put it on the cloud. You have a hundred gigs of free storage that you get if you're a Creative Cloud member. Use your storage for your portfolio. I'm sure you have Google Drive. Use Google Drive for your most important files that are also backed up in two other places. Put them on the cloud. That's the spot for them. All right, so that covers card reading and data management. The next one we're going to talk a little bit about is lighting. Lighting is something that is not the most important thing to get. And I'm going to say that twice. Lighting is not the most important thing to get off the bat. And the reason is because you can make a living shooting natural light and not own your own lights until you're ready. Now, my case, that was two years. It took me two years working as a photographer, paying for my studio, paying for film, all the expenses that a working photographer has before I could afford to buy lights. And I bought one. Now that one light, I used that one light for a very majority of my career and I still very much have a one light style because of how I lit when I first started. It was very, very simple. Now I have lots of lights. I have three strobes. I have multiple LED lights, but when we're building a lighting idea, we always start with one light. Learning how to master one light is what we all need to do. So my suggestion is buy a single strobe head, buy one. And I have some amazing strobes that I've put on my Amazon um, Pro Photographer's recommended checklist or recommended um, list. And I'll show you I'll show you what I think uh, is, I mean, again, if you want to go the Amazon route, I mean, you can buy Profoto, you can buy um, many different like Ellen Chromes. Welcome, Preston. Welcome, Julie. I'm glad you guys are here. I'm going to show you what I'm using or what I would buy today if I was buying lights again. If I had to buy lights again, the strobe that I would buy, and this is this is actually unbelievable how low the prices are right now. This is a video light, a continuous video light for 132, which it, it's, I mean, it's a, a huge sale right now, but let me just find the strobe that I'm speaking about. Uh, uh, I missed it, perhaps. Did I miss it? Oh, yeah, I did. I, I went right by it. <laughs> I went right by it. Here it is. So if I was buying a light right now, I would buy this light. And it's because, I mean, by the way, it's prime days. So everything's on sale right now. But for 217, you get a battery powered strobe with a trigger, so it's wirelessly flashing. It has a Godox mount, so you, I mean, uh, Bowen's, a Godox mount, it has a Bowen's mount. So any of the other accessories that you buy on Amazon, any of the Godox lights fit, uh, Bo Bowen's, Godox, like almost everything on, Am on Amazon is a Bowen's mount. So it's 217 and you're able to shoot with strobe outside in the park in the wilderness and it gives you a thousand flashes i'm gonna buy this light because this is one of the kinds of strobes that i don't own i don't own mobile strobes so i'm willing to buy that at 217. the next thing a 300 watt studio mono light is 132 dollars and you can apply a $20 off coupon and it's a hundred bucks. I'm going to say again, studio light, a hundred bucks. Now this 
to a guy, to a photographer who's been doing this, like my first light, I paid 1500, 1500, my first light. Like I saved for it for two years. Like, like the fact that you can get a studio strobe, 300 watt seconds for a hundred bucks is mind blowing. Now's the time. If you're going to buy a strobe, buy that one. Like it's, I mean, I'm not doing this to make commissions although i do get the smallest commission if you guys decide to buy anything but 132 dollars 20 dollar off coupon delivered to your door um okay so if i was buying a non-battery one i'd buy this one it, it's digital like it's almost newer than the ones that i have and i spent like on my three lights, I spent 1500 No, on one light, I spent 1500 And then on two lights, I spent 1000 So I'm like 2500 in on lights. But for how low the price is on these, I'm willing to like maybe buy some extra lights so I have five heads or eight heads instead of just three. You know? Um, very, very. And the coolest thing is the replaceable battery is $47. So another thousand flashes. I'm going to buy this one before I buy that other one. Like this one is kind of genius. So again, lighting, if I was buying a light today, that's what I would buy. That's what I would buy. I hope that helps you. That's for sure the way that I would go um, if I had to do it again. Um, as far as modifiers, stands, I like C stands. You can buy C stands on Amazon. Um, and when it comes to light stands, buy high quality stands because they're supposed to last forever. Don't cheap out on on stands. Don't cheap out on grip equipment. You can get super high quality grip equipment on Amazon, but make sure it's the high quality stuff. There's lots of bad stuff on Amazon. One of my favorite brands is called Small Rig. They're really good um so that's showing you a in studio plug into the wall lighting setup very inexpensive 100 bucks and a mobile out on the location battery and like 200 bucks you know welcome Les. glad you're here all right so um Lights are useless without mastering lighting techniques, though. By the way, if you buy one light and you're kind of lost with placement, I made a video called um, Essential One Light Setups. It's on my Insights from a 30-Year Pro playlist. Um, I, there's an extended version and there's like a 10-minute version. I show you how to do Rembrandt lighting. I show you how to do butterfly lighting. It's super easy to follow. Watch some instruction. And if you need further help, reach out to me. All right, so that covers lighting and creative control. Keep in, mind, keep in mind, I've been lighting for over 30 years. I'm just starting to get it. <laughs> it takes time. Um, high quality tripod. This is the next, um, this is, we're getting into like essentials now, like essentials and beyond. All of these are essentials, but these particular ones are like, uh, the tripod, I have a tripod and a monopod. I'm only going to talk specifically about the tripod today, but this is my tripod. It is a Manfrotto 055. Manfrotto is an Italian brand. It is a, it's the Ferrari of tripods. Like every part on this tripod is replaceable. The heads are, there's all kinds of different head. I have video head, I have photography head. My monopod is also Manfrotto. Everything is compatible, everything's replaceable. Having a high quality tripod is this important. This tripod that I have here, my assistant bought this for me as a gift on my birthday, by the way, my birthday is this coming Monday. If you want to also buy me a gift like this super expensive tripod, <laughs> you bought this for me on like my 
25th birthday. So I've had this for like 27 years, this tripod. So the same head, the same sticks, 27 years. I've replaced the feet. I replaced these things, these things sometimes, but it's like the legs get loose. You tighten them with like Allen key or like, it, it's so, it's like a car, you just fix it. And um, it always works. So high quality tripod, very, very important. If you're doing long exposures, if you're wondering why your images aren't sharp, if you're shooting with longer lenses, obviously you have to think about weight. You also have to think about how high your tripod goes. My tripod goes like almost to six feet. So when my tripod is, well, higher than six feet, when my tripod's extended, I need an Apple box. I'm six one in order to stand on it to be able to see through my camera. So um, high quality tripod, also a camera that can take rigging, not just the camera, like a grip, a heavy lens. Like if your tripod is questionable, get a higher quality tripod. And again, I have an 055 Manfrotto. I would not buy a tripod from Amazon personally. I would go to like a camera store and buy a proper tripod personally. Um, just like I wouldn't buy a camera body from Amazon, I would buy a camera body from a camera store. Um, my next upgrade, if I do decide to upgrade my tripod, will be carbon legs instead of aluminum ones. It might save me a pound, pound and a half, um, maybe. Or uh, th the next smaller size down, maybe. Um, but I think a high quality tripod is one of the most important things that a new photographer should get. Um, last little bit of accessories, I would say filters, screw filters. I don't use filters, um, meaning a UV filter, throw it out the window. Um, all of our cameras have UV filters built in a lens hood if you're worrying about protection a lens hood offers m more protection than a filter a filter is degrading your image a lens hood is not a lens hood is improving contrast and is actually acting as like a buffer and stopping things from being able to actually touch your lens if you're shooting and you have a lens hood um, and you're shooting like this with the lens hood on backwards, like, what are you doing? Honestly, put the lens hood on properly. That's what it's for. It's for protection and it's also to improve sharpness and clarity on your camera. So um, if you don't have lens hoods for your camera or for your, for your lenses, find out what lens hood your lens takes and order it. Like I have hard lens hoods for all seven of my lenses higher quality lenses come with lens hoods less medium road lenses don't you have to buy them additionally all right let's put this over here because that's kind of messy all right what are we waiting what are we missing um the filters that are valid um neutral density filter polarizing filter those filters well those aren't unnecessary filters those actually have a task they're cutting how bright the light is so you can get shallower depth of field with the settings that you're using um, polarizing filter cutting glare off glass cutting glare off water making the sky more saturated like that that's photography so there's room for that but uv filter out the window um I don't have any color calibration tools because I just have all of my monitors set for the same setting, which is Adobe RGB. All my monitors, all my computers are set for Adobe RGB. My camera set for Adobe RGB. Everything looks beautiful. Everything looks the same. So I don't think unless you're one of those poor people, meaning um, <laughs> someone who's on a PC, I feel sad for you because um, from brand to brand, 
there's no color consistency and then you're constantly chasing monitor calibration and as soon as you take that work and look at it on a mac like their client is going to be doing it's going to look different so um jump on a mac early get used to it early and um let it run your company ha huh. and again i talked about this last thing on during my amazon must have crazy deals on amazon video i did a couple of weeks ago and that is an aftermarket camera strap i thought i was cool having a camera strap that said r5 on it but all i'm doing is advertising that i have an r5 it's a target for thieves thieves and I decided I'm kind of done with the R5 strap. So recently I found this strap, which is a 100% genuine leather camera strap. It's got a little bit of padding and some nice um, anti-slip um, suede on the inside and leather on the outside. Um, so I bought it. But the problem is, is I shoot video often and i need to take my camera strap off a lot and my issue with my r5 strap is i was looping and threading the strap on and off on and off so often i found the solution which is a quick release system from telesyn which makes it so i connect my strap to these and then these little hooks connect here you can put them on with one hand it goes on and off really easily and I can go from my tripod to around my neck I can go from my gimbal to around my neck and it's not advertising R5 you know and it's just it's actually becomes like it looks like my purse <laughs> I mean it's kind of chill so that camera strap um when the last time I talked about that strap it was 25 dollars it's now like 35 I think so some people are buying it, which means it's a good one. It's um, highly rated. Um, and a camera grip. I took the grip off my camera um, for this particular video, but the extension grip on your camera that gives you the horizontal vertical option, it's not an essential, but when we're talking about additional accessories if you have the money although you should be using your grip taking it off using it taking it off like depending on what you're shooting if you're having a day of video shoot with the grip off if you're having a day of stills shoot with the grip on you know if you need extended battery life when you're shooting that video day shoot with the grip on like there's times for it doubles your battery and it keeps your wrist straight whether you're shooting horizontal or vertical you don't have to like do this it just makes your wrist straight and you're holding the camera more secure all right so guys as you're embarking on this photography journey you have to remember that having the right gear is kind of a catalyst for unlocking that creative potential have a look at the links that i shared in the description of this video my bag sponsor there's so many amazon links i didn't like isolate them but i just put my pro photographers checklist there you'll see tons of stuff that's super helpful i think and everything that i talked about today um remember high quality tripod 50 millimeter lens the best mirrorless camera you can afford single strobe light card reader mac laptop lens choices that 50 and then that next lens when you can afford it and a camera bag that will let you expand into more gear when you have it don't buy a super a small bag that you can af like that just holds a body in a lens because you're going to grow out of it very quickly so as the sun is starting to pour in on my face here and my exposure is a little bit changed. I want to thank you guys all for watching, whether you watched for a long time, like my OGs, or you just popped in, like you, who I just saw pop in and say hi in chat. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope today was helpful. If you're a new photographer and you're looking for some help to get to that next level, consider subscribing. I do mentorship. I do 
photo reviews, I do critiques. All my goals are are all about trying to help photographers get to the next level. That's all I'm thinking about constantly. All my content's geared towards helping you get to that next level, whatever it is. If you're trying to be a pro, I'm gonna help you get there. If you're trying to just make better photos, I'm gonna help you get there. Guys, thank you so very much for watching Tuesday's episode of Ask a Photo Pro. We will be back Thursday. Please hit the like button if you like the glow on my face right now and you're obsessed about photography. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. What, you want photo reviews or something? Wait, you want photo reviews or something? Huh? Just photo reviews? Huh? <laughs> Julie. Julie, Julie, Julie. Today, we are not going to do photo reviews, but Thursday, we are going to do an entire episode that is just photo reviews. Today, today, no. But Thursday, we're going to do just photo reviews. I'm going to just be hanging out, talking to you. I have questions. I want to catch up on everybody who's been watching. I check the photo reviews. I see how many are there. And when there's not like a ton, I try to condense them into one episode just because like the photo reviews are most relevant for the people who submit and are people who are afraid to submit. So I'm trying to make it so you have a little bit more time to submit. Let's give you till Thursday and let's make Thursday a review only episode. Yes. And Julie, yes, you do have time to drop more. Thursday's episode's all about you. If you have questions, make sure you're here to ask them. If you have photos that you want me to review, make sure they're in there. If you have assignments, night photography, street photography, anything for me to look at, make sure it's there. We're going to make the whole hour Thursday about you. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you then. Take care, everybody. Thursday, you get two more days to submit. We'll see you then. Hope you guys liked the chat on the stream again. Have a good night, everybody. Make sure you watch another video. I'll see you on that.